Welcome to a video tutorial to help you with um, converting between metric units. Let's begin. So I'm going to um, share with you two different approaches to converting between metric units. The first way is the way commonly used by chemists where we would use conversion factors. So for example, if we wanted to convert between milligrams and grams, we can use the metric conversion that there are a thousand milligrams equals one gram, or we could say that one milligram is 10 to the minus three grams. So whichever way you're comfortable um, defining the relationship between metric units, um, use whichever term you feel is the best. So how many milligrams are in this many grams? So we have 0.53 grams. And if we go, there's, um, for every gram, we have 1,000 milligrams, right? Or so we start with the same, the same way, but I'll do it the other way. There's 10 to the minus 3 grams in every milligram. Um, notice that it doesn't matter which way you set up the calculation. When you plug in the values, we're going to get the same result. So let me punch that into my calculator here. Okay, so either way, we're going to have 530 milligrams. And because we are working within the metric system, the sig figs will never change. If we have two sig figs to start, this is defined, so it has infinite sig figs, or you could think of it as exact. So our final result should have two sig figs. Now, the other way to approach metric conversions is the shifting method. Now, the shifting method um, requires a little bit of memorization, but once you have the, um, the setup, it can be very handy. So we need to look at the metric prefixes in the following order. So it only works if we write them this way. So we start with kilo on the left, and then 10 to the 0, that would be our base unit. 10 to the minus 1 is deci. 10 to the minus 2 centi, 10 to the minus 3 milli, and then we'll jump up to 10 to the minus 6 is micro. Alrighty, so now we can take advantage of the fact that um, we can shift the decimal by adding or subtracting the exponential terms, right? So let me give you, let's do some examples to let me show you how this works, right? How many decigrams are in 3,475,892 micrograms? So notice, we are starting here at micrograms, and we want to go to decigrams. All right, so we are going to move here. So we're moving from minus 6 to minus 1. So we're going to go 5 right, five to the left. We're going to shift our decimal. All right, so let's write this out. So right now, the decimal is here. So we have to shift it five to the left. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so we would rewrite the value. This would become 34.75892 decigrams. So there is the shifting method. Let me demonstrate it for you one more time. All right, here's an example where we have kiloliters. So now we're over here at kiloliters, and we want to shift to milliliters. So this time we're going to go to the right. All right, so to go from kiloliters to milliliters, right, three, and then minus three, so that would be a six units, so that's a shift of six.
So if we have, if the decimal started here, we're going to shift 6 to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Our decimal goes right there. So we're going to have to add zeros. All right, so that would be 375,000 milliliters. All righty, so one method is not superior to the other. It's whatever feels most comfortable to you. Um, I think the idea, though, for those of you entering allied health careers, is you want to get to where you can shift back and forth. And these are the primary metric units that you'll be using in your profession. There are many more metric prefixes out there, but you're not going to need to worry about those. Alrighty, so now with unit conversions, let's take our metric units and convert them into English units. Because we live in a, a country that still uses the English unit system. So in, um, in this case, it's important to have bridges. And so the bridges are linked to the main descriptions of matter, right? So everything with matter has mass and volume. And then it can be helpful to also have a distance conversion. And so I will share with you my favorite bridges, but you can have your own bridges. So for me, 453.6 grams equals one pound. When I'm looking at a mass conversion from the, the metric to the English system, this is the conversion that pops into my brain. If you have another one, that's fine. Volume. So when we're converting between volumes, I like to go from liters to quarts. And so let me call up that one. So. For every liter, we have 1.057 quarts. And then for distance, I like to use 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So it, does that, it doesn't matter which bridges you pick. It just matters that you have bridges. And the, you need at least three bridges, one for mass, one for volume, and one for distance. So let's practice using our bridges. What is the kilogram weight of a 210 pound patient? This is a very common conversion. So we start with the weight of the patient in pounds. And then here, my bridge is not necessarily the best bridge. We have one pound, 453.6 grams. And then we're trying to get to kilograms, so then we would have to say that there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So some of you might have gone, yeah, there's an easier way to do that, and there is. So let's go that way too. We could go directly from pounds to kilograms because there are 2.205 pounds in every kilogram. So I've shown the calculation two ways, and in my dream world, that will be empowering to you. Because notice that it doesn't matter which way we solve the problem. If we go from pounds to grams and grams to kilograms, or if we quickly just go straight from pounds to kilograms, regardless of the way we set it up, the final units are in kilograms, and so the, an the final answer is going to be the same either way. So I'll punch, punch the values in for the first calculation, and we see that the, this patient weighs 95.26 kilograms. Or if we use the alternate method, we see that we get 95.24 kilograms. But now let's bring in our sig figs. And so he, 
for both, in both cases, we would report two sig figs. And so notice that when we go to two sig figs, we get the exact same report, result, 95 kilograms. So hopefully this is empowering to you that there's no magic formula, no special way that as long as we systematically apply our conversions, we can get the, um, the correct answer. Let's practice one more. A typical member of this species, um, Vibrio cholera, is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 6 meters long. How long is this in inches? All right, so now we're going to take advantage of our distance bridge. So start with what we know. We know we have 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Well, and so for every meter, we would have 100 centimeters. And then for every 2.54 centimeters, one inch. So if we look at our, our units here, the meters cancel and the centimeters cancel and we're left with inches, which is what the question is asking for. So now we can punch this into our calculator. And um, so entering, there is a scientific notation um, tutorial that can help you if you're um, unsure about how to do scientific notation in your calculations. All right. And then the calculator spits out a very, very small number, 0 0.00. Zero, three, four, six inches. And last but not least, we have two sig figs here. This is infinite sig figs. It's exact because it's defined. And then here we have three sig figs. So for our final answer, remember leading zeros never count. So it would be 0 0.0035 inches for that um, bacteria. All righty. So now let's um, go to some more challenging conversions to, um, to build our confidence. All righty. So now we're going to need several conversion factors. Um, horse racing uses the distance of furlongs. If a mile is defined as eight furlongs, how many kilometers is a 22 furlong race? All righty. So we know that one mile equals eight furlongs. Okay, and it's important with miles, right? M-I. Make sure to pay attention to the difference between miles and meters. And we want to get to kilometers. That's what we're curious about. And so where do we start? We start here. OK, so we have a 22 furlong race. And we're trying to get to kilometers. So because we have our bridges, we know that we can get from miles to kilometers. Um, and so. The first thing we do is we have to get out of these crazy furlongs and get into miles. And then by now, everyone should have memorized that there, in every mile, there are 1.609 kilometers. So we did our first conversion to get convert out of furloughs into miles, and then we could go from miles to kilometers. And the un we have the units that the question asks for, so we can go ahead and punch our results into the calculator. And we would see that this would be a 4.425 um, kilometer race. And last but not least, let's check our sig figs. So we have two sig figs here. This is exact, so because it's defined. 
So it has infinite sig figs, and then we have four sig figs. So this race would be a 4.4 kilometer race. All right, so we haven't worked with volume too much yet. Let's practice, we'll do one more practice problem and practice with volume. So there are 42 gallons in one barrel of crude oil. How many milliliters of crude oil are contained in one barrel? Alrighty. So this is taking advantage of um, the English system. So you need to know that there are four quarts in one gallon. And then that links us to our bridge because there are 1.057 quarts in a liter. And so, and we're asked to get to milliliters, and then we know there are a thousand milliliters in a liter. So it's a good problem solving strategy to, when you look at a question, look at the gallons, look at the units we're given and the units we're asked to solve for, and just start brainstorming all of the different possible conversions that you may need. It can be really helpful to write those on the paper. And so then as we go to solve it, we have that information. And ideally, all of this information will start to be second nature in, in your brain. So we start here with, we have a 42 gallon barrel of oil. And we're trying to get to milliliters. So since we have a bridge here, from quarts to liters, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of the fact that one gallon is defined, right? So this is defined in the English system to four quarts. Then we can use our bridge, 1.057 quarts in a liter. And then last but not least, in a liter, there are a thousand milliliters. So, we used um, an English unit conversion to go from gallons to quarts. We used one of our metric English bridges to get from English to metric volume. And then we used a metric conversion to get to milliliters, which the question asked us to solve for. So now that our units Get, let us know that we've done a correct setup. We can go ahead and plug the numbers into our calculator. Okay, and we find out that this is a huge number. One, five, eight, nine, four, zero milliliters. So there's the display from the calculator. And then last but not least, let's go ahead and report this using the correct number of sig figs. So two sig figs here, infinite, infinite, and four. So we would report this answer to two sig figs. And some, this, sometimes this feels really strange, but it would be 160,000 milliliters. So um, that concludes our um, conversion tutorial emphasizing metric units, um, metric to metric conversions and metric to English. So go ahead now and um, practice a few more problems like this from your homework and to reinforce your understanding.